Welcome to the Staying Free podcast. This podcast seeks to give a voice to real people around the world who are attempting to stay free, stay sovereign, and stay sane in a world which is changing faster than ever. In this episode, I talk with Gareth Martin. Gareth is a traveler, yogi, and transformation coach currently living in Brazil. He is also the co-host of the Ridiculously Human podcast, which strives to teach the art of vulnerability and authenticity and create greater human connection. I hope you enjoy this conversation. And if you have any feedback or suggestions for interesting guests, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. A link is in the show notes. On to the episode. Gareth, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for agreeing to come on. Um, we've been uh, following each other on Twitter for a little while, but why don't you just give people a little bit of an introduction as to yourself? Yeah, Johnny. Well, thanks for having me, bud. It's uh, it's it's an absolute privilege and honour to be on your on your show, buddy. Um, yeah, I mean, you and I started following each other on Twitter, and, and it's it's so weird. Like, I have this kind of love hate relationship with with social media. You know, like you kind of can drag you down and uh yeah all these sort of negative things but in the same time you you know the, depending on how you use it uh you can benefit so much from it and and meet great people and, and one of them is you you know so so that's been really cool i mean yeah just uh, a little bit about me i mean i am currently based in brazil um i am originally from south africa i spent uh, about 20 years actually living in london i i left south africa after high school and uh, decided to go try out London because I'd been there my last year of high school. I'd been there to play uh, rugby, uh, like on a rugby trip. And I was like, oh my God, this country's amazing. <laughs> I need to go back. So I decided to like put off my, my studying at university and then go to London just for one year. And I ended up being there for 20 years, but, <laughs> and um, just had the best time ever, you know, and then ultimately just got stuck into to working in London. I was, I was there in the city um for for 20 years well but i mean on and off I, I did a hell of a lot of traveling i was really lucky to to sort of you know not necessarily be working full time the whole time and then you know traveled the world and um yeah now currently find myself in in brazil and uh yeah meant to be living in portugal but actually stuck here because of the, the pandemic so so yeah but all good but all good life is good so tell me about the situation in brazil because it's kind of difficult to ascertain when you're not in the country just what it's like. I found that probably of every country out there, Brazil seems to be impossible to figure out because it seems like in some places, uh, you know, they've gone really hard on restrictions and other places it's quite open. So um, what's it like? Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest with you, I can only really speak about where I am. I'm down south in uh, Santa Catarina and but it's it's pretty it's pretty okay to be honest with you. I mean, the only thing really is like you know, if you you know if you go shopping, you have to wear a mask, and if you go to a restaurant, you have to wear a mask. But you sit down, you take it off because the, the the COVID disappears when you sit down, of course. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, but it's pretty like because I'm also in a little town, but it's actually quite good. But but unfortunately. You know, I mean, I know you and I see this the same way. Like, and unfortunately, so many people are kind of indoctrinated, but and, and you still have a large majority of people that are kind of like walking outside, you know, in in the little town, like you know, with their face masks on and stuff. Um, but uh, but we've actually been very lucky, to be honest with you. You know, like the first three months in where I'm staying were, were, were well, not three months, like maybe six weeks or so, it was kind of like it was everywhere in the world. But since then everything's been open like there's everything's been open there's been there's been no restrictions besides like i just said the, the face mask and and yeah and and, and brazil runs a lot like uh, the us where you have the different provinces and you have different like like governors or whatever it's called here of, of the provinces and and they kind of decide like what goes but um but yeah it's actually pretty good i mean if you go to some of the beach towns like a few hours up the road like it's there's nothing like you just go and, and they, it's busy and it's like you know there, there's nothing really there so but if but once again it's like i think in most countries if you go to the big cities i think like sao paulo rio you know maybe there's a bit more restrictions but i don't actually know if i'm if i'm totally honest with you um i i've just i've actually kind of zoned a little bit out on on what's going here because of I've just been lucky to be where we are, um, you know, and kind of away from that heaviness of like a big city and stuff. So I've just kind of enjoyed where, where we're living in this little kind of sleepy beach town. And, um, 
and yeah, but but I mean, the divisiveness is huge here as well. But I mean, you know, the you think American politics is divisive with Republicans and uh, Democrats. Well, here yeah, it's it's just as bad. You know, you have the, the guys who love Bolsonaro, and then you have the guys who love Lula, and it's just like it's fiery. You know, <laughs> so it's uh, it's really it's it's interesting. But um, but yeah, it's pretty good where we are. I must be honest. So what's that experience been like for you having spent 20 years in London, which obviously is a massive metropolis, and now going to live in a kind of small town? Because I think that there's quite a lot of people who seem to be doing this at the moment, or at least seem to be thinking about it, which is that cities have become very unattractive lately. So what's that experience been like? But it's it's literally the best thing ever, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I think maybe you have to be ready for it as well. Uh, my, my wife and I, we we left London in September 2019 uh, to go traveling around the world uh, for about like seven months. And then the plan was at the end of the travels to go live in Portugal, right? So we had, we had actually bought a piece of land in Portugal and we, we had designed a house already uh, to to build there. And so, so that's kind of where we were meant to go. So we were kind of like ready for that sort of um, escape from the city. And... Um, actually escaping from the city. I know we're in like a smaller, like even a smaller town now than where we will be in Portugal, but it's literally been amazing, but like, it's, um, it's so weird, you know, it's so weird, but like when we first went to Portugal and we were driving around, like, so we bought a, a piece of land in this town called Edesera, which is, which is a cool, cool place. And, um, I was driving around there, like, you know, this is on a visit between while we were still living in London and, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to live here? Like, there's like, there's no like big shopping centers. Like there's, you know, everything's just really small. It looks kind of like old. I'm like, this is going to be a big adjustment. <laughs> but, but I can tell you now where we live is even smaller. And I'm like, I do not know how I could ever go in, back into a big city. Because when we go, like we, every now and then we go about three hours uh, up the road here to a big, big city called uh, Florinopolis. And... But as soon as you hit the traffic and like, just, I don't know, there's a heaviness of a city, you know, there's also awesome things about a city, you know, like uh, you, you can't take that away from cities. But like for me now, just being out in the open has been by far the best thing ever. The, simpl the simplicity of life is amazing and there's just a different vibe to it, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, but I think you might, you, you almost have to be ready for it, you know, like probably if you're like in your twenties and stuff like that, you still want that city vibe because, you know, you're meeting people and you're partying and you're working and, and these, but, you know, I think once you maybe reach your thirties and, and, and older sort of thing, then you, you like, you start thinking about life a little bit differently. Yeah. I've definitely had a similar experience when I left London, um, this last time, because I came back to the UK, uh, from Australia, I was in the UK for about a year and now the idea of living in, in a big city really just does not appeal to me at all. Um, that said, you know, I have um, discovered Mexico City, obviously living in Mexico. And I have to say it is a really good city, but would I want to live there permanently? Probably not. Um, that just isn't something that appeals anymore. But I also wonder whether, because I've experienced similarly to you, both in the UK and in Mexico, that the difference between when you go to um, a small town versus a big city is, is absolutely huge. I mean, I, I was going, uh, I went to a place in Mexico called Zipolite, which is a tiny little um, town on the coast. Uh, I don't even know if you could call it a town. I mean, it feels like a village. There's, you know, like a few restaurants and a few shops and a beach and that's about it. And, you know, people there were all partying. There was, you know, parties on the beach every single night, loads of people all together, um, you know, kind of, up getting close with each other, etc. And um, I took a flight out just a few days later and went to Mexico City. And it was just completely the opposite. You know, everyone's wearing masks and, you know, everyone's sanitizing and, and you know, there is just a completely different um, energy there, exact, exactly like you're saying. And it's really got me thinking about whether living in these big cities, um, even when seemingly the powers that be want to kind of push everyone towards these, you know, smart cities. And we hear all these kind of terms, you know, and we, they seem to want everyone to live in these kind of condensed spaces, but it seems like the human condition isn't necessarily designed for that. And, uh, actually when you 
see the difference in energy with people living in some of these smaller um, towns, you know, just the fact that they are less fearful, just the fact that they don't feel afraid enough to need to wear a mask or they're quite happy going and spending time with their friends and family, etc. when people in the city seem to be, you know, really abiding by the rules, but not necessarily because they're just more obedient, but they obviously have a higher level of fear about this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is fascinating what's going on now, you know, like it's, it really is like sort of this sort of parallel universe that we're living in on Earth, where there's these different sort of um, realities that are going on. And um, it, it's just, I mean, I, I'm finding it fascinating. I, I really like, I love psychology and just just seeing the differences in people, you know, and um, the, the differences in where people are from, uh, where they're living within their own country um, is, is, is really interesting, you know, like, I mean, ultimately, I think, ultimately, I think, but it just comes down to fear, you know, and, and unfortunately, not many people have unplugged from the, the sort of the system yet, you know, and I think that's, that's the most important thing like to, to sort of start, begin, start seeing the, dif- the, the, the world differently is actually unplugging from, from, you know, current news, like mainstream media and all that sort of stuff. Um, I remember for me, it was actually, I think in 2013 was when I like actually unplugged. I went, I went, I went to, I came to South America um, for the first time. I was on a sabbatical from work and I came here for seven months and Wow. It was just like, it was eye opening. I mean, you know, you know what traveling is like, it's amazing, you know, and I just traveled for seven months backpacking around South America. And then when I came like, like, you know, a few weeks before I came back, I was like, cool. What have you kind of learned? What do you want to do when you get back? Um, how do you want to live? You know? And, and the, the first, the first day I got back, I, I unsubscribed from all like, you know, sky, like, you, you know, you have sky contracts and that in the UK, I unsubscribed from all of that. I just unplugged from, from, from that sort of, um, you know, that sort of intake of information. And I didn't realize it at the time, you know, like I wasn't like, Oh, I'm plugged into the system. It's wrong. I was just like, Oh, I just want to live a more sort of peaceful life and, and learn more things, spend my time actually, you know, listening to more podcasts and reading more books and these sort of things. And I think that's like, I think, I don't know if many people are, have, have actually done that, you know, like they, they have unplugged and, um, yeah, that's why we find ourselves in the way we're, you know, in the situation we're in now, because people are just believing, you know, and, and, and this is the nice thing about humans. I think, you know, it, it, but it's also like, it's also got us into the trouble we're now, you know, p- humans actually want to believe that people are telling them the truth, you know, and, and they, they don't want to believe, oh, these guys are lying to me day in and day out. You know, that's just a nice thing about humans. We actually, we actually, you know, are caring and thoughtful and, you know, uh, um, trusting, and um, unfortunately, there's this other side of, of the coin, you know, which uh, which is seems very evil, and they just want to lie to us and, and spread propaganda, and that's taken a lot of people, taking a lot of people down, you know. Yeah. So that's an interesting area to explore because you mentioned the word awakening, and I definitely think that that is a useful term. Um, I actually had a discussion the other day about the use of this term with my mum because she thinks that it's an an offensive term to use to say about waking up and talk about people being asleep and I kind of sympathize with that I don't mean to kind of demean people by saying things like um, that they are asleep but there does seem to be an ability of some people to kind of see through all of this stuff and um, other people seem to almost indefinitely be believing this what we can clearly see as being absolute nonsense and just lie after lie after lie. And some people seem to just accept this new reality they're constantly put into when, you know, the goalpost shift and the narrative changes, they just accept it and say, oh, okay, oh, what's that? You said it was two, you know, what was it? 5 million jabs to freedom. And now it's 10 million jabs to freedom. And now it's, we need 60% vaccinated. Now we need 70%. Now we need hundred percent. Now we need, uh, you know, boosters. And now we're going to need boosters every single six months and all the rest of it. And some of us have been able to see this coming from day one. And even if we haven't necessarily seen it from day one, once that narrative changes once or twice or three times, we say, okay, like enough is enough. Um, We're being lied to here. Why is it that some people seem to be on that continuous treadmill of just believing lie after lie and never seeming to get to the point of 
waking up for a lack of a better term. Sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. I think um, it's really interesting um, because I've, I've, I've thought about this a lot, like, and, and asked people as well. I was like, how can, like, what is it? Is there a certain like trait or are there a few traits or, you know, something about a person that, that can, that, that sees what's going on, you know, like, what, what, what is it? Like, um, so for example, I was like, okay, um, it, is it, is it people like, like you and me, you know, we list, we, we listen to podcasts, um, we, we've traveled the world, um, you know, I didn't go to university for example. Um, and you know, are there like, sort of, are there a few sort of buckets like that, which kind of make you just understand the world a little bit differently? Is it that, you know, or, you know, I don't know, or, or, or there's, there's another interesting thing. I don't know if you've, if you've heard of uh, Yuri Bezmenov at all. I don't think so. So you, there's, there's, I'll send it to you after this. There's a, there's an amazing uh, talk that this guy does. He's ex KGB, right? So in, in 1985, he did this, this like only like one of maybe two interviews. And, um, he spoke about this thing called, um, ideological subversion, right? Which, um, which is like, a a sort of technique that the the KGB and and Russian uh, Russians did, you know, to control their population. Basically, it's, it's like how do you demoralize a, a, a population, and um, that's what seems like actually been going on. So um, he talks about there's di- there's four different stages of um, of ideological subversion. The first one is um, demoralization. Like you, you kind of demoralize the nation by through various different techniques, right? And it's basically like you, it's your own people that actually take each other down, you know, and, um, you, you can see it. It's, I mean, you, you see the, the division in the world now, you know, like there's, there's two sides on, on almost everything. Um, and there's only those two sides, you know, you support one team or the other. Um, but this process actually, um, takes a long time. It can take 20 to 25 years or, or between 15 and 25 years, something like that, you know, and it's done through the media and all these different things. Right. Then there's, um, the next phase is destabilization, right? So they, they destabilize the sort of like the economy, uh, the politics, um, all these sort of things. Right. And then the next one is there's a crisis. Okay. And, that's the crisis is quick. It's like a six week thing. And, and this is exactly what is going on now. You know, like, um, we, we've had this crisis, obviously it's gone on longer than, than six weeks, um, now. Um, but then the final stage of ideological subversion is normalization. So we keep hearing about the new normal and all that sort of stuff. So I think a lot of people to go back to your question have been, demoralized or been going down the slope of demoralization for a long time. And now once the fear kicked in, in the crisis phase, they are, they just, they don't know what to do, you know, like, and they only want to follow the narrative and they think they're part of something good and something better. And they acting from a place of fear is, is like never good. You never make a good decision. Do you know what I mean? And you, and you want other people to be fearful too. So, so yeah, I mean, I don't know, you know, that's kind of like two prongs to your kind of um, question, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily know like what does separate us, but I know there, there have been techniques applied onto, you know, populations and nations and stuff to, to get us to the stage that we're in now. Yeah. So when you mentioned there about acting out of fear, I definitely think that that is at the core of a lot of this, which is that it seems like there's some people are stuck in this state of fear, which seems very, very difficult to shake. And that has been kind of quite deliberate. Like you can, you know, we know from looking at things like in the UK, we had the minutes from the SAGE committee and they were basically saying, yeah, we need to ramp up the fear of this thing and make it, make sure everyone's really afraid. And, you know, these are behavioral scientists who have studied this thing. You know, they know how to essentially make people think or, or kind of behave in the ways they want them to behave. And it's been so effective and, you know, in my view, far, far too effective. Um, but there does seem to be some kind of a process of inoculation, of kind of inoculation that happens to other individuals where you just don't get kind of sucked in to this type of stuff and it's just washed over us. And if anything, the more we see it, the more kind of allergic we become to it and we almost go in the complete opposite dire- direction. And um, yeah, it always interests me trying to figure out exactly what those things are. 
Yeah, I mean, the only other thing I can think about tonight, because I'm, I'm also like, I'm like, you know, ultimately, but we, we have to come together as humans, right? Like, we're going to have to start, we're going to have to start joining forces, you know, because they, they've got us fighting with each other. And that's part of, you know, what they want us to do. Um, because what we actually need to come to, together to fight the, the ultimate enemy, you know, whoever these people are that are, that are being the tyrants that they are. So the, the thing, the only thing I can think about that people like are still kind of like, um, sort of, you know, not, not aware really what's going on and kind of taking the narrative for, for what it is, is that I think a lot of people are just like super busy. You look, you look at the structure of families and, and things these days, you know, like, like both parents work, you know, like it's, it's really hard to kind of make ends meet. Um, you know, you, you, most parents seem to be working like full time, you know, as far as I can see, you know, especially of a certain age group, you know, and there's like, I don't know, there's this, this, this way of living that's changed. So, you know, you, you've got the, the stress of work, which is stressful enough, you know, like having your companies and the targets and, and all this sort of thing, you know, traveling to work, commuting is, is never really easy either. Then you've got your, you know, say most people have got kids, for example, you know, even if you don't like, you know, but we let's add kids in there. Um, you know, you've got to find time for yourself and that's almost impossible if you're doing those, those other three things, you know, you're traveling, working, have kids. Um, so they don't have time to, to do things, um, like we do, I guess, you know, like listen to, to four hour podcasts, you know, or, or go watch like long, uh, sort of, uh, documentaries on, on YouTube and stuff, you know, because their focus is work, making ends meet and looking after their kids, you know, so they'll just go, yeah, the news. Cool. Of course. I mean, the news has always been right. So I'm just going to listen to that and whatever it is. And, so, so they're in this constant flux, you know, they're never able to kind of get out of it, you know, and I think some of us have been lucky enough to maybe design our lives. And, um, we've, like I said, we've unplugged more than they have. And that's why we see things differently. Yeah. I, I like your approach to this. I think you have quite a lot of sympathy, uh, or maybe empathy is a better word for people who are kind of the, on the other side of this and, yeah, it definitely, I don't always have that myself. I feel like I'm getting, or I have been like very frustrated for quite a long time at people who don't see it because ultimately we are in a kind of situation whereby one group of people are trying to, are, whether or not they're trying to, but they are certainly enabling the confiscation of rights from another group of people. And that's only happening in one direction. You know, the people who, for instance, don't want to take the vaccine, they're not saying, well, you shouldn't take the vaccine. I have no problem mm. with anyone who wants to take the vaccine, but I don't want to take it. And um, I have my reasons for that. But I don't necessarily need to articulate those reasons to anyone because, you know, I am an individual and I have rights over my own body and that should be respected. And I, and I certainly feel that when people are betraying this very basic fundamental kind of agreement that we should have in society i find that frustrating and it makes me angry and you know i don't always necessarily compose myself um in the right way when i'm dealing with that especially on twitter obviously twitter it's very easy to be to be angry and to kind of shout into the wind and quite often you know that kind of gets promoted and you get quite a lot of traction for that but even in my own life and in my own relationships i find that i don't have uh, the degree of sympathy or empathy that I probably should. So I like that. I like your, your approach to it. I think more people need to kind of, um, think in those terms essentially. Yeah. But listen, I mean, I don't want to act like an angel here, but I mean, I I've had my, my, I think, I think you actually almost need to go through these stages, right? I, um, I almost put my life on hold, like literally for, I have put my life on hold to be honest with you for a year and a half now, you know, um, I was working as, as, um, a coach and running, running our podcast with my friend Craig. Um, and we actually stopped it. Not, not, be, not, not because of the, the, um, because of COVID, but I had a flipping problem with my computer and getting computers fixed in Brazil is another story, especially if you've got a Mac, but so anyway, there was these, this, like these events that happened and we, like, so we just kind of stopped doing that and that was taking up a lot of time. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me, um, let me go and like sort of use this time to sort of understand the world, you know, like, let me just spend a lot of the time researching, uh, watching stuff and, and just, just seeing it because it's, it's a, it is a fascinating time that we're going through, you know, but I had this, you know, I, 
I got angry, but I got really angry um, with uh, with people, you know, um, and you know, like watching all of these things. I don't know because I am an empath. I got sad, but I, but I'm also not just an empath. I'm also like you know, I can be feisty, you know, and and I did get angry, but like and and I I, I had. I'm not even joking. Like three of my best friends, right? I had serious confrontations with, and I mean, the I I confronted them properly, and I you know, and I I I was, I say this now, but I don't think I would have. I, I I was prepared to to let those friendships go, you know, and I'm talking about guys I've known since I was like six years old, sort of thing, and um, I was so I was super super angry, you know, like but but. But I, but that's not me, you know. And I think I was also sucked into to everything. Um, but I think you have to get, you have to go through these phases. And once you get over the anger, and you like, and you realize, you know what? Actually, that's not going to do anyone any good. I'm just plugging back into their system. They want me angry, you know. They want the people that 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 sort of are disobeying their rules. They want us angry so that we do fight and we do act out. And um, that, you know, I had to go through the process of being angry and to have these fights with my mates to then realize, no, 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 actually, this is not the way to do it, you know? So, so yeah, I've, I've, I've gone through that too as well, but, but I think now I like, I'm, I'm in a better place like myself, you know, I'm, I'm back in who I was, I'm more in alignment with my like values and, um, what I, what I intend to do in the world and these sort of things. And now I'm like, okay, the fighting gets us nowhere. Um, doesn't mean you can't call it out, but like you, you've got to now, you've got to work on the solutions and, and not, not, and, and be more calm because your energy is powerful, but you know, and, um, if you can control your energy and, and use that like towards a positive sort of outcome and, and seek resolutions, then you're going to, you're going to have much more success. You know what I mean? In like, say maybe just we, we can't even convince people but like you know just maybe getting them to question things a little bit you know and and i'm, I'm super happy that that like those three mates are like we, we all we on walk um talking terms again and there's nothing like there's nothing there but they you know i just think it's part of the process of what's going on you know even even people like us that are aware of like all the lies and stuff we can still get trapped into that 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 sort of cycle of division and and we must we must be conscious of, of our own, of our own thoughts and, and own ways of acting out. Yeah. I mean, I agree with all of that and I definitely think that it's an important message, but there is something niggling in the, in the back of my mind about this, which is that perhaps there is a time and I'm not advocating by any means of aggression or violence or anything like this, but I do think that Let's let's take historical events of the past. So, for instance, the formation of the United States and things like this, where they ultimately had to opt out. You know, there was no conversation to be had there. It was a situation of we have to opt out because we are being oppressed. You know, there's been similar things throughout history. And I'm wondering whether what we're going through now is a situation by which the time for conversation is kind of coming to a close. Because as much as I would love to believe that it is still possible to have those conversations and to kind of find common ground and find reason. I do think that the way that things are escalating um, with this situation, that I am feeling even in myself that I'm almost getting spiritually into kind of opt out mode. It's just like, I'm ready to kind of opt out. And I think a lot of people like that, they're like, you know, it's very hard to share a world with people who want to do things to you against your will. Um, so as much as I agree with kind of trying to to, to channel a, a positive energy, um, that becomes very diff difficult. And um, there, I assume that there is a point, and I'm interested to know your views on this, where that kind of conversation, the time for that closes. So let's take an example, for instance, in America. I'm I don't think that it would be the best thing for the red states in particular, talking about Florida and Texas, but there's several more of them. I actually don't think that it would be the right thing for them to try to come to a common agreement with the blue states and say, okay, look, let's try to get along. I actually think that secession would probably be the best thing for the United States. And that's not some kind of 
by some kind of violent means. But there is such a difference in philosophical views between somewhere like New York or somewhere like California, where they're implementing, you know, very rigorous um, vaccine mandates and passports, etc., and places like Florida and Texas, which are banning them. Now, I'm just not sure a conversation is capable to be had there. And it definitely makes me think about things that have happened in the past historical moments, which ultimately, I would argue, has been a good thing. So do you think that there is any place for opting out? Is it kind of consistent with these kind of, I guess, the more um, forgiving, um, the more forgiving way of dealing with things that you're kind of advocating? Well, so what do you mean exactly by opting out? Well, I guess so, for instance, um, you know, that in uh, America, um, if the people decided we're going to move to a place like Florida or Texas and we want to actually secede from the United States because um, we don't agree with the, the way that everything else is going and it's difficult to share a union where you've got some states which are mandating medical procedures and others which have them completely banned, it's banned from mandating them. So I'm not sure whether there's any conversation to be ha had in those um, particular circumstances. And I'm, I also feel like this is happening on a broader scale more generally. Um, the people who kind of would consider themselves to be kind of um, aware to what's going on and um, recognize that the lies and aren't willing to compromise on um, things like their bodily autonomy do you not think that there is a point at which opting out is on the cards and where we actually need to just build our own communities and say, look, if you, um, you know, we need to, for instance, ha support each other, uh, whether that's economically, whether it's moving to um, certain places or whether it's kind of, you know, homeschooling your, your kids or uh, there's lots of ways which that could be expressed. But I feel like we're kind of moving towards that and I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing. I'm not necessarily saying, okay, we should be angry um, with each other, but I guess just um, a kind of opting out, I believe could be a positive thing. And in a way, if that has to come from an angry place, I'm not sure whether that's necessarily um, the worst thing if the outcome is that you say, look, sorry, you know, it's not possible to have a society whereby one group of people wants to oppress another, there is a certain point where you have to walk away from the table. Yeah, listen, I think, um, I think it's inevitable, but to be totally honest with you, that, um, that parts of America, um, I don't know, become their own, own countries. I mean, it's, it, it's going to happen, but I, I mean, you just have to look at, you just have to look at like history, but, and you just have to look at, um, you know, countries, there's, there's some of those, what are they called? Like infographic sort of things that where they show like, you know, this is what Europe looked like over 100 years. And you just see like all the borders of places like changing, like constantly, you know, even up to recently, but like borders of places have changed and names of countries have yeah. changed. And, and, you know, um, it, it, it's never not, it's never not changed, you know, like never not been changing. And I think America has been fortunate, um, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be susceptible to that. And, and I, I ultimately think you're going to, you're definitely going to see that. Um, I think conversation is always the most important thing um, to try to resolve issues. Um, uh, first, that you, you need to sort of um, do as much of that as you can right, to, to try and resolve uh, issues. I, I, there was a really amazing podcast. I don't know if you listened to it recently. Jewel was on um, Joe Rogan. It was literally one of the best podcasts I've listened to, and she's an amazing lady. Um, and she said there's a, there's a thing called the Socratic method, which is basically like, you know, when, when you're speaking. Um, she says when two people uh, come together and have, have a conversation, uh, a third thing is discovered. Right. And I think that's what's lacking now, you know, so like you and me say, say you and me were polar opposites. Right. Um, but we decided, cool, we're going to have a, a discussion and we're going to talk. You're going to go, yeah, I think this is why we have more. We should, should, should not have more. And I'm going to go, no, you're talking rubbish. This is exactly why we should, but we have a conversation about it. Right. And then through that conversation, we discover a third thing. We go, oh, wait, actually, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the, what the other outcome is, you know, but that's not what's happening now. And that's what we need to do. We need to, we need to do everything we can to have conversations. You know, I know, I know it's super difficult though with cancel culture and all that sort of stuff happening and, and people getting deplatformed and whatnot. And, 
It doesn't seem like they want that to happen, but it doesn't mean we mustn't still carry on pushing for it because that is the easiest resolution to what's going on. But then also to, to what you're saying, I think opting out, but opting out is happening. Like it's happening left, right, and center. I mean, each week I'm, I'm on calls with lots of different people and I'm sure you are too. You know, I'm on lots of different telegram groups and, uh, you know, you just see it on Twitter and stuff too, but there's, there's so many people that are organizing and mobilizing, but they are organizing alternative schools, homeschooling, uh, medicine, uh, like, like medical stuff, um, food, uh, all these things It is happening. And, um, the, the, I mean, this is what, this is what, what I know, I know this is kind of like tapping into what the, uh, say like the world economic forum and those guys are saying they're like, yeah, the current system does not work and we need to change it. And, and like, you know, actually, yeah, some of what you're saying is right. Like we do actually need to change some of the current system. Like we need to get rid of all you bastards that, that are like in the governments that think that you can rule us, you know, and um, we need to change a lot of things about society because for the last hundred years, you've just been churning out like flipping robots, you know, with the, this, the way education is and the way we work and, you know, all these rules and like what time you must go to work and, and all these sort of things. Like we, we, we do need to change that. And, and people are people, what people love freedom and autonomy, right? That's, that's what we are. You know, we, we humans, we, we here to, to live. We here to, um, we here on a spiritual journey on the world, on, on the planet earth. And I'm, I'm seeing lots of uh, groups that are, that are creating communities, um, that are looking to buy pieces of land. I'm, I'm, I'm part of this, um, this foundation. Not, it's not even a foundation. It's like a, it, it's got a name called awareness foundation, but it's just like an awareness group. Basically these guys have set up their own social media platform, completely uncensored. They have uh, their own private currency. Uh, they have their own vaults in uh, the Isle of Man to store commodities like, you know, gold and silver and stuff. Um, they, they are working on, uh, education platforms, um, you know, and this is just one, you know, and then, then there's, there's so many other guys that are, that are, you know, follow online and you have the, the freedom cell guys, you know, they're setting up their like little Agora communities. And I mean, it's just nat naturally happening, but you, this is what they've underestimated. They've underestimated how many people actually like living the way we, we live, you know, and that we do actually want our freedom. And the, it, it's impossible to put the fire out of the human spirit and we're going to fight and we're going to fight for, for what we believe in. And, but we don't have to get necessarily uh, physical about it. Um, uh, we can just opt out and, and, and do our own things and, and naturally your system will just crumble, you know? Um, you know, when you look at Rome, like Rome basically fell because they raised their taxes like you know ridiculously and then everyone was like oh well screw you oaks we're out of here and when and the city just and rome just crumbled you know and, and that's what you really have to do but but also you know what you were saying about uh you know does it have to get physical um it's a possibility but i mean I, I'm, I'm not ruling it out. I mean, to be honest with you, they've woken up a lion inside of me. I'm, I'm willing to, to fight for this, you know, like I, I will, I will, this, I will fight till the death with, with what's going on now. I'm not going to, not going to say I'm not going to get physical, but I would prefer to, to finish it in other ways. I mean, if you look at, sorry, I know I'm carrying on here, but like, if you look at the, the Vietnam war, for example, you know, like, like the, the worldwide rallies, you know, they, they started small, but then eventually like almost every single country was having these, these rallies, like, you know, and protests about the Vietnam war. And they, they basically had to, you know, had to pull out, the Yanks had to pull out in the end, you know, cause of all the international pressure. So, you know, all these things do add up, you know, and there's, there's, I, I totally feel this is a, this is a, 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 a final battle almost, you know, in many ways, you know, and, um, and it's good versus evil. And, and I, I, I really believe that uh, evil's outdone itself and the good is just, is just going to sort of come thundering in and, and sort of take the, take the show in, in the end. But I totally believe that. Yeah, I love that message. And I definitely agree with that, despite some of my, I guess, more pessimistic attitude on some of these things. I certainly agree that it has kind of awoken the human spirit. And, you know, it seems to me that they are trying to create... Um, a kind of top-down, very sanitized society, which is according to a few people's views. And when people think, okay, well, maybe they're going to pull off the Great Reset, I think the Great Reset is 
absolutely fundamentally doomed to failure because it goes against human nature because human nature actually is you know very messy and you know it's chaotic but at the same time it's really beautiful and there's so much diversity and you know people all have their different opinions and that's why we have fundamental first principles and you know this is something i've got really really into especially over the last 18 months but even before that um is this idea that despite how chaotic the world is all we have to do is protect fundamental first principles. You know, you don't steal from someone else, you don't hurt someone else, you don't do something, you know, that you would not done to you, etc. There's just a kind of series of things that you have to respect. But what these kind of technocrats are trying to bring about is, yeah, in my view, it's never going to work because people uh, will resist it. And if you try to ex- extinguish um the human spirit by saying, no, we're all going to walk around and we're going to show our vaccine papers everywhere and, you know, we're only going to be able to drive as much as they say you can in your car because, you know, um, they've decided that you can only use so much fuel or you can only buy these things from the store because your social credit score isn't high enough. Ultimately, this is just in complete contradiction to what the human the human spirit wants to experience. So I definitely agree that it's not going to work. Um, I'm not sure how messy it's going to get, but I agree with what you were saying there that I think most people are willing to die for this. And, you know, this is something I just don't think that they have factored into their calculations. I think they genuinely think that people are just going to roll over and say, oh, well, you know, okay, that kind of sucks. I've got to take a vaccine every six months because the people who are planning this, they they don't have conviction and they don't have a kind of spirit of their own in a, in a way that they recognize Um, is a kind of danger to their own plans. I think that they've miscalculated because they think that everyone is a sheep and that everyone's just going to go along with it, probably because they don't have this same burning desire in their body to be free, um, which is probably why they want to sanitize society like this in in accordance with their own um, kind of utopian or dystopian, as a lot of people would uh, determine it to be, um, views (laughs) and an agenda. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about the protests because we've seen massive, massive protests going on recently. And this just speaks to what we were just saying about that awakening of the human spirit. It seems to me like I've never seen um, anything like it. And we're, we're not even very far into this, but I think that we are witnessing the seeds of the the seedlings of a revolution here. A hundred percent. But I mean, the, the, they, they, you can never underestimate the the human spirit, but and they are. I mean, you just have to look at the size of the uh, the protests. You know, like they they started small, but um, and I mean, London is getting they're getting massive amounts of people in now. You know, you look at I mean, just everywhere. I mean, there's there's some great threads on on Twitter. I think James Melville is one of the guys. He he has like you know he's like. This is happening in Croatia. This is happening in Rome. This is happening in Switzerland. This is happening here, here, here. You know, it's just like, and there's massive amounts of people, you know. And you never hear about it on mainstream media, but because mainstream media is obviously, I mean, they're just sort of a, another arm of the sort of uh, sort of cabal or whoever whoever these people are. Um, and governments, of course, they they just. I mean, it must suck being a it must suck being a journalist now if you, you work for one of those things like you can't actually report on real news. You actually have to make up news or, you know, ignore. I mean, imagine having like these, the biggest stories of our time and you have to lie about them. Like it must really suck. These, the, all these people have no, have no soul, but for sure. And, and they, they're just real sad people. Um, but uh, the protests are, you know, they're, they're, they're super powerful, but, and I think it's, it's really important. I mean, uh, you know, that mainstream media is also not reporting them because at the end of the day, but we're, we're witnessing, I, I truly believe we're witnessing the downfall of all the old systems, right? We, we, and, but because they still have power, you know, to a certain extent, and, uh, you know, obviously a massive reach still, they're holding on. They, they're literally like a boxer in the corner. They, 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 they know they're in the corner. I mean, you've got to think of a guy like, like it's so funny listening to Joe Rogan speak. He's, 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 I love him. He's so flipping good. And he's like, he's like, fuck. He's like, fucking, I've got more downloads than flipping CNN, MSNBC, blah, blah, blah. All these guys together, like on one week of my episode, he's like, he's like, never mind all the podcasts. You know what I mean? He's, and, and you've got to think that's one podcast, but that takes on all the big media channels. So, so 
they're not reporting these these big events because they're on the downfall, but they, they, they're trying to hold on to what they got. Um, so at, at some points, you know, there's going to be reporting of these. I think even this week um, in Australia on the on one of the one of the main channels there, they started reporting on, on the protests. You know, they always lie about them, about the size and all that sort of stuff. And at the end of the day, but every time they lie, it's just another, you know, they're just exposing themselves again and again. But people must keep doing it. But I mean, I know people like lots of guys are going, oh yeah, the protests don't work and stuff, but no ways. The protests do work, but because what you're doing is you're meeting like-minded people, you know, you're like, you never know who you're going to meet at this protest. You might be like this, I don't know, this lonely, like, 50 year old man, you know, in your, in your little village. And you're like, Oh my word. I I just, I feel like I'm the only one. Uh, Maybe I should go get the vaccine. But then you go to one of these protests and you see all these people and you're like, Oh my God. And then, you know, and then you meet, you you know, you meet these people and they're like, Oh no, you've got to stay your ground. And there's all these other things happening. And, and, you know, and, and that's how, that's why these protests are good things because, you know, humans share information and they, they, they share good vibes when they're around each other and, and we, we egg each other on. And I think, they, they must definitely carry on. And, and it is just the beginning, but I think it's just the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, like a lot of guys saying that the revolution won't be televised and, but it will be flipping online, but there's a lot of videos online, you know, and you might not see it on YouTube, or whatever, but you go to a few other platforms and there's, you know, it really sort of, um, you know, makes your heart beats when you see all these people standing up to what's going on. So, so yeah, I'm definitely all for it. Completely. And, um, yeah, that is one of the things that I'm really on board with as well. It's like I've been quite involved with the protests. I've gone to all the ones that I've been able to go to. And there is something about that energy there that's just really important. So even though I do think that the kind of opting out strategy is a good one and it is important that we start saying, OK, how can we start to build our own parallel uh, societies, you know, um, whether that's buying land, homeschooling, growing your own food, all these things are important. And I actually feel like there's maybe too many people on that side of things who don't uh, subscribe to the idea that protests are important Mm -hmm. or they think that we're kind of past that stage. Whereas I think that you can, you can do both. You can kind of battle on both fronts. You know, you can be doing things personally to um, help you and your community become kind of more self-sovereign and all the rest of it and to kind of exit the system. But at the same time, I think that there is something super important about the energy you get at these protests and, certainly for me, because I was going to the protests in the UK really early on. I mean, I was going from like April 2020. So, you know, probably like a week or two after we came out of lockdown, I was at the protest there and they were really small and we were all fitting in Trafalgar Square. And um, to be honest, the protest movement didn't really kick off at all in 2020. I always felt like, you know, we were in quite a small group. Obviously, they were lying about the numbers as they always have and probably <laughs> probably will until they just completely obsolete themselves. But I felt like it was actually when I'd already made the decision to leave the UK in around May. And I would say that the two months before that, probably March and April 2021, um, these protests were just really, really epic. And the vibe was just so good. And, you know, I really felt like something changed. And when we went to those protests, there was just a different energy there and you really just felt like we have got a movement on our hands here um prior to 2021 i didn't feel like we had a movement but really it was in around the spring of 2021 and i was like wow there is something big happening here and it started in london i mean it seems like people have forgotten that now because the uk has been very slow to re-implement lockdowns and stuff even though this is coming back across europe but people seem to have forgotten that our protests really were the ones which set the world alight. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I don't know whether that was um, the perception that you got from over there in Brazil. Yeah, listen, I mean, I think, I mean, of course, I'm cl- very close to the UK. I mean, I flip and love it. And um, I, I, I watch, I keep in touch with it all the time, you know. So the protests there were awesome. I was like, go, go British. Like, you know, get that that British spirit out there, you know, and, and start fighting for for what is right. Um, so it was, it was great seeing those ones. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting that, that some people, like you said, that, that are, you know, sort of on say our side, um, don't see the protest as something that that's, you know, necessarily good, but to be honest with you about it, like, you know, when you're in a war, which it feels like we, we basically are, you don't just go to the war with, you know, with your guns, you know, you go with your guns and your grenades and your tanks and your, rockets and your missiles and stuff, you know? So 
the protests might just be, say, the guns, you know, but all the other things that happen as well, like I said, the opting out, the starting your own communities, um, understanding the law, for example, you know, the law is a bunch of bullshit, to be honest with you, when you really start like digging deep into it. Um, you know, you've got to, you've got to sort of, all these things add up, you know what I mean? And, and that, that's our armory. Uh, so, so anyone that says, you know, the protests are no good, I'm like, mm -mm, that's not right. The protests are really good for, for maybe not the reasons you think, but you know, like at the end of the day, but humans are, energetic beings that's really what we are you know we're constantly constantly swapping energy good bad good bad good bad good bad good bad you know but but when we when we're all vibing high that changes everything but you know i mean maybe it sounds too flippin i don't know esoteric or whatever but i don't think so you know like i think you know the 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 more higher we're vibing the the more possibility we have of coming out of this on the right side, you know? So, so that's why these things are good things. And we need to, you know, we need to, even our thoughts, you know, our thoughts, we mustn't give energy to their negative thoughts, you know, and, and they, we mustn't let their, what the, these like controls and whatever that they're trying to do and, and restrictions, like we, we must, must not try think of those things, you know, like we must think about the life we want to live, you know? So your thoughts are really, really important. They have a, you know, they can really just sort of have an outcome on on your own future, your own outlook, but also collectively as as humans, you know. And I think we we must we must not disregard these things, you know. We we humans have lost touch with um with who we are and what we are, you know, and our connection in the world and nature and all these things. And um, you know, we must we must realize that uh, there is a collective consciousness and uh, we're all part of it. And and if we are more positive and um, uh, sort of higher vibing, we 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 have a ultimately a a better impact on the world yeah um i agree with all of that and in particular that we need to have a vision for the future because you know it's no good as just saying hey we don't want to live in a world without uh vaccine passports we don't want to live in a world where we're putting masks on kids and all the rest of it we actually need to say no what is the world that we want to live in what does that look like you know um and present a kind of positive world of the future um, so with that said, what is your view of the future? What what do you want to see um, change? Like if we could fast forward 5, 10, 15, 20 years, um, you know, you name the the time frame, what's the world that you want to see that we build? Yeah, so but I mean, well, first of all, what I think we need to do is we need to sort out um, how we are led. Um, and I don't think, you know, I think we need, government needs to dissolve. Like, you know, there, there needs to be a new way of running things. There, there's way too many flipping people in every single country's government in the world, right? And there's way too many um, sort of like kickbacks and, you know, like you pay us this, we'll do that sort of thing. So we have to kind of, we have to think of a new way of how to um, run nations, you know what I mean? And possibly in some sort of, decentralized way you know we can we can be grateful for what's going on like in the in the crypto space you know i mean flipping whoever came up with the the block the the bitcoin idea like you know that's amazing like that 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 is you know kicked off so much innovation in the world you know and and it's going to allow us to have much more transparency in, in also like privacy, but also transparency. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, and we really need that, but we, we need to have a world that is transparent, but also private. Um, but also where we, our autonomy is, um, and on our freedom are like the, the two most important things we need to agree on, like, you know, the, you know, like, you know, there's the 10 commandments, for example, you know, but like, let's, let's, let's rewrite those sort of things or something. And, and let's try to live like that as humanity. But we, I mean, I'm a, I guess I've become more hippie, but in, in the older I've got. So if you ask me about the future of the world, like, I'm like, you know, we must, um, things must get smaller. People must uh, start doing things again, like start using your hands again, you know, like start, start making stuff, like stop relying on these big corporate giants, you know, to do everything for us. Um, just learn, like connect again with nature. Um, let's start growing our own food. Let's start, let's, 
I don't know. I mean, it's so crazy. There's so many things like the, that the world could be. Like, you just think like, you know, I go back, you go back, like say 40 years uh, in, you know, where, maybe where we both grew up in both of our countries and kids could run around, but like, I mean, even me growing up, I was running around like outside and like, you know, not a care in the world, but you didn't have to worry about like these weirdos or crime or anything like that. So like a, a world that is like free from crime um, free from, uh, you know, sort of, I don't know, these, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, so that would be, that would definitely be one, um, using your, your hands more, um, smaller, smaller governance, um, and just, I don't know, just simplicity, but just simplicity at the end of the day, you know, like we, we, and we also need to, you know, financially we need to, um, we need to remove things like say, uh, even central banks, but the, the amount of control that those guys have, we, we need to think, we need to rethink, um, about how we run our economies. Uh, we need to remove things like tax, like, um, income tax is, is robbery. For example, I mean, it was, it was invented in 1913. Um, just what was meant to be a brief thing just for the millionaires in the U S but now 108 years later, like the whole world, does it and, and all we seem to do is like work as slaves so financially we need to to work out new systems too um and um yeah i mean e everything for me but last year I, my friend and i always chose a, a word of the year and my my word of the year was simplicity and uh, like i think if we can do that in, on like a large scale for the future you know let's simplify how we work in in the world you know let's let's like all the laws that there are, let's like, let's tear that book up and let's rewrite something that's very simple to sort of, um, understand, you know, um, on, in everything that there is. Um, and yeah, let's just, let's just get more in touch with, uh, with who we are. Um, and yeah, so those are a few things, but I know it probably, it's a, it's a little bit like jumbled, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, th those are things that, that I would like to kind of, um, see in the future for sure awesome yeah love it um gareth it's been really great talking i'm so glad we had this conversation i feel like we could have gone on for a long time but we have to um call it a day at some point so why don't you just let people know where they can find you and um any last words yeah uh, well johnny i just want to say first of all like massive thank you to you you know like uh, i know how much effort goes into uh running a podcast and um you know like what you're doing by doing this uh, is adding to that sort of um, positivity and high vibration in the world, you know, like just, just through having these conversations, these are important things, you know, and um, more people should be having conversations, not just like, it doesn't have to be as, as sort of structured as this, you know, but like have conversations with your, with your friends and, and families in there. So, and, 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 and try and understand each other. I think, uh, you know, to understand where, where people are coming from. And yeah, so, so, so thank you to you. Um, and in terms of people finding out about me, so, um, I've got a podcast here, um, ridiculously human. Um, they can, uh, they can just, just Google ridiculously human. We have a podcast there and then, uh, you know, on Twitter it's Gareth E. Martin is, is my, my, th my handle. Uh, I, I actually stopped using Facebook and Instagram. Um, but, but I've still got my accounts, but, uh, but that doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, just some, some final words, I guess, would just be like, people come together, listen to each other and let's heal the, the, the division. You know, let's, let's not get like each side is caught, you know, in this kind of like vortex. And we, we don't want to, we almost don't want to kind of like come together. Like, like I'm right here and I'm right here, you know, and, and, and that's, and that is not helping anything. So Let's all drop our egos. Let's start listening to each other. Let's start talking to each other. And let's, let's take on these people that are trying to flip and take us out, basically. And, um, and yeah, but we, and we're going to, you know, we're going to. So uh, with, without you or not, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to win this. So, so, yeah, thanks so much for your time. But I really, uh, it was just great, um, great being on your show. Thank you. Thanks, Gareth.